Okay, here's one of the key concepts of this. We want you to enterprise your ranch. Now this is something that uh, experts may disagree on, but we found that if you really want to start tackling where your costs are, you need to know what the different businesses on your ranch are contributing to your bottom line. Think about this in terms of a business, okay? Let's think about this in terms of GE, a big business. They've got a whole bunch of different businesses under the corporate logo of GE. They've got businesses that make appliances, dishwashers, uh, clothes dryers. Uh, they used to have businesses that make blenders, those kind of things. Uh, they have businesses that make light bulbs. Do you think they know the profitability of each of those businesses? Well, I sure think so. Do you think if they have a business that is consistently not profitable, they would do something to address that or eliminate it? I think so. So what are the businesses on your ranch? Well, it, uh, maybe you've got a cow-calf business, and that's the one we're going to focus on today. Okay, And, and uh, maybe you've got that one going on. Maybe you've got a hay business. Okay, A lot of folks like to think about these as being tied together, but we need to separate them for analysis purposes. Okay, Maybe your hay business is not very profitable. Maybe your cow-calf business is. Wouldn't you like to know that? Okay. Maybe you've got a stalker business or a backgrounding business where you're backgrounding your calves in a feedlot or, or something like that. And then you've also, this one is kind of different for folks to think about, have a land business. And this land business uh, may support some of these other businesses, but we need to think about it as a separate business. Aaron, do you have anything to add on that before we describe that a little more? Yeah, I guess I just would add that I think it's really important to think about the different enterprises within the ranch and especially we think about folks that maybe own their land asset, it's easy to forget about the fact that that land should be charging the other enterprises a fair market rent. For example, if you're running stalkers on own land, you need to charge that stalker enterprise exactly what it would cost if you turned around and leased that land out to someone else to run stalkers on. Same thing goes with the cow-calf business and the hay business. If you're putting up hay, you would need to pay a cash rent value for that land if you were going to do it on someone else's place. Same thing with cow-calf. You would pay a cash rent per pair or per acre. If you were going to lease that land to someone else, they would pay that amount. And so we really need to make sure we fairly uh, break out where the dollars are being made or perhaps even where dollars are being lost. Good point. And a way to think about that is if you stopped doing all these things today okay if you you're maybe you're a rancher and, and you owned your land and you sold all your cows got out of the hay business and got out of the stalker business would there be a value to this land business and the answer to that is absolutely you could lease your ranch out to uh, to somebody to bring in cow calf pairs uh, lease it out to somebody bring in stalker calves if you got out of the haying business there's value to that hay standing in the field before you cut it uh, maybe you could lease it out to somebody to graze or, or bring in a custom farmer and he'd put it up for you. So to be fair in the analysis of these other businesses, they need to pay that land, that land going rate to that land business. If they can't pay that, then maybe we don't need to be in these other businesses and we should really analyze uh, if we should be in the cow-calf business or the stalker business. Now, same thing with the hay and the cow-calf business. If we are supporting our cow-calf business with farm-raised hay, then we need to charge that cow-calf business market price for that hay. Okay? If our cow-calf business can't pay market price for our hay, then uh, why don't we sell our hay to somebody else that will pay market price for it and uh, let that cow-calf business find another way to support itself. Okay? And I realize it's, it's hard on a ranch to, to make these fluid changes like I'm saying. And, and we really don't need to be uh, changing from year to year as the market swings on these. But doing an analysis and thinking about these different operations on your ranch as enterprises and looking at their long-term profitability is really key to having a successful business. And your ranch is that. It is a business. And as all these things come together, hopefully every one of these different businesses is making a return to that ranch. And if one is not making a return, then uh, we need to eliminate it. Okay, you ready to go on? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. All right, so let's talk about calculating unit cost of production of this cow-calf business. And again, for this exercise, we're going to focus on this business right here, Okay, the cow-calf business. I'm not very good with my circler there. <laughs> so, okay, um, 
I want to point you to some resources here for the length of time that we're going to be on the call today. We're not going to go through the uh, nuts and bolts of this thing in very much detail. So uh, there are resources posted here at the Ranch Practicum website. Um, just for, let me bring that up here real quick and, and show that to you. Um, okay, here we go. This is the, the Ranch Practicum website and right here on the home page is a link, uh, information on conducting a unit cost of production analysis on your ranch. Uh, there's the spreadsheet that we're going to show. Here's a write-up by Harlan Hughes and we need to give credit to Harlan on this. Harlan is a professor, uh, uh, was a professor for a long time at North Dakota and he developed uh, a lot of the methods that we're going to show you today and really spent a career going from kitchen table to kitchen table of ranchers and helping them do this unit cost of production analysis and then uh, benchmarking their data. So a lot of the work that we're going to show you today has been, been done by Harlan, who is a partner on our uh, Ranch Practicum School. So, so these are the, the different tools here that you can use and spend some time going through these today uh, because we're not going to have a chance to, to, to go through these in very much detail. Okay. So with that, let's get, get into the spreadsheet here. Uh, this is what the spreadsheet looks like, and you'll notice these tabs across the bottom here are how you navigate this. So there's an introductory tab that, that talks about, uh, gives a little bit of instructions on how to do it, and then you just work your way from left to right. So if we were to look at the production profile of this ranch, and, and uh, we put in there our, our number of cows, number of heifers, these kind of things, number of calves, weans, steers, heifers, bulls, their average weights, and our cows that died, calves that died, if we put all those numbers in there, we're going to come to some numbers like this. And uh, this will show our pregnancy percentage on the ranch. This is essentially asking the question, how good a job is this ranch doing at producing pounds of calf? Okay, And that can all be answered by this number right here at the bottom. Pounds weaned per female exposed. Think about that number a little bit. That takes into account everything that goes on on the production side of the ranch. If we have open cows, if we have calves that died, if we have uh, um, oh, uh, calves that just didn't grow very well, weaning weight, all that comes into that number right there. Okay, And then over here I've got some averages for North Dakota and I'll, we'll get into those a little bit more. But uh, So these, this ranch had an average pounds weaned per female exposed of 489 pounds. Okay, Not bad. If we had some, low, some real low numbers there, we could look up through these numbers and identify where we're struggling. So, you have any comments on that one, Aaron? Okay, let's move on to gross income then, and we're going to kind of skip through these fairly quickly for the sake of time, but essentially all we're doing here is taking any source of income the cow-calf business produces and uh, figuring out what that is so we get a total amount of gross income for that ranch. And for this ranch, our total gross income is $106,000. We divide that by our number of cows, and we look, and that's $641 per cow that the ranch is, is bringing back. And then we go through some math here and convert that into a, a 100 weight of steer calf equivalent and we use that number to calculate our unit cost of production. Everything on this unit cost of production number is based on the equivalent of a steer calf and that allows you to benchmark that next to your steer calf price received. So if uh, we figure at the end of this that we have a, a ranch that has a, a $1 unit cost of production then what that means is it costs that ranch $1 to produce a pound of steer calf. And so if you're selling your steer calves that year for a buck ten, then you know your net return is that ten cents. Okay. So after we go through this uh, gross income, we get into our feed cost. And this is where a lot of the costs are on the ranch. Um, we're going to charge ourselves pasture rent. So again, we're going to pay the land business for the use of that land. And there's a lot of different ways uh, folks can figure that. Uh, this one here, we're going to use 10 AUMs per cow per year, and we're going to value that at $10 per AUM. Now, that's probably undervalued for my area and probably way undervalued for Aaron's area. So whatever the going rate is in your area, you want to figure that out and, and charge yourself market price.